anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing? Doing all right. Uh, Odin's Creation says in the chat, we're just going to start with, with this. Uh, I listened to last week's Sloop Picks, and I was shocked with the expectation that Oklahoma and Texas game uh, supposed to be Texas easy. I don't think you guys took into account the choke DNA of the Longhorns. Uh, I believe, and I, I'm going to, I while I did pick Texas, I do believe my exact prediction of the Red River rivalry, which is a thing I have to say very slowly and deliberately, I do believe my prediction was, if you're betting real money on this, don't. Which, if you interpret what that means, it's that I was in no way confident in that pick. <laughs> so I don't know if I don't know if I ever said Texas easy. I don't know. I don't remember what Kyle said though. So maybe maybe you're blaming Kyle. Welcome to the Sloop Picks. How are you doing today, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> uh we didn't. Yeah, kind of going with um, what he said here. Yeah, last week was pretty. That's it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough for most people who were in our Discord doing our pickums. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. See, but that's the thing. If everybody sucked, then that means it was the game's fault and not the people's faults. Am I am I wrong? That's why you grade on a curve. Like when you take a test, they grade because sometimes the test is bad, right? Yeah. Sometimes the students are good, but the test is bad. So if everybody sucked. Then the picks were good, but the yeah. the games were bad. Of the how many do we have? We have eighteen. We have eighteen picking, and only two came out above fifty percent. That's okay because I'm going to kill it this week. Last right, week well, is last week. A uh, Akuna Matata or something. Uh, K Sarah Sarah. Can I think of a third cliche? I'm not going to try. Last week is last week. We're focused on this week. I'm gonna kill it this week. All right. All right. Let's let's start us. Last off week here. is last week. The standard is the standard. Um. The offensive line sucks. Uh. Yell at Lou Holtz, and ah, uh, I had the rhythm of a last thing, but I couldn't think of something else to say. Roll Tide. All right. All right, we're going to we're going to start off in ACC country here. Nooner on ABC, we have Syracuse. Syracuse taking on Florida State. The Seminoles are a 17 and a half point favorite. Jared, who do you got? 17 and a half points. Uh, 17 and a half points. Yes, this is this is where Syracuse has lost Two, their last two games uh, lost to Clemson 31 to 14, which it was actually a little bit close. Really, it was closer. It just, just a complete dumpster fire by Syracuse at the end of the game there. But they got just demolished by North Carolina the, this last weekend, 40 to 7. Started off strong, but yeah, I, I don't think they're as good here, but. Um, I was going to let you pick Jared, but I'm going to go first here. Then <laughs> um, you pulled I'm a gonna, classic gonna, me and just interrupted me. And uh huh, I did. I I, I, I pulled a Jared here. I'm going to go with the Seminoles. I'm going to pick the Seminoles here. I just don't tr don't trust Syracuse here. Uh, I'm going to pick when in doubt, pick the quarterback. Going with Florida State here. Fair enough. Uh, the Orange started strong, uh, both in the win column and against the spread this year. Uh, but they have begun slipping in both categories. But Florida State has struggled to cover against larger spreads this year. Uh, but since uh, this uh, particular number is under 20, we should be safe. 17 and a half points, not enough. Uh, give me Florida State. All right. Uh, Dinger. Austin Dinger. says 17 and a half points and FSU has 80 percent on the money. In them on them in CBS, the line has since moved to twenty point five. 
Yeah, I, I, I think I would take it at seven. I did just take it at 17 and a half. I think 20 would would scare me off, though. Yeah. What does Dinger have to say, Kyle? All right, Dinger is our guest picker here. Uh, he says, will, this, will the semis be caught looking ahead to next week's top 25 matchup with Duke? Probably not, but Florida State has looked meh often. So 17 and a half is too rich for me. Pick Syracuse. Our, our, our first difference right away. That's fun. All right. Uh, next one here is Oregon and Washington. This one also in ABC. And this is our early afternoon pick at 3.30 here. And Washington in a 7 versus 8 matchup is a 2.5 point favor, which is pretty much home field advantage. Pretty much. I'll let you go first this time, Jared. Oregon is a perfect 5-0 and against the spread so far this year. Ride the duck, Oregon. Ah. Short and sweet. That's all I need. But I can't. I, I can't. I can't go. I can't go against my boy um, Penix over there. He's he's a he's risen to the occasion so many times here. Uh, fan favorite here, rock steady. He's yeah. Enough puns here. I got. I got Washington. Uh, I don't know, man. I'll take big Knicks. Um, Austin says I love Washington, but if you're going to give me points to take Oregon, I won't say no. Yeah, I, I mean, basically. I mean, it's pretty much a pick 'em. It's pretty much a pick 'em. But it isn't. Okay. Big Knicks over Big Penix, Austin says. All right, Dinger. Dinger says here, welcome to the X Bowl. Knicks versus Penix. I'll choose the longer one, Washington. <laughs> oh, dinger. <laughs> uh, nice. All right, next game here, Jerry. We're moving on is Kansas and Oklahoma State of Fox Sports 1, 330 kickoff. And the Jayhawks are a three and a half point favorite. I had to make sure I was looking at that correct here. Because I got the Cowboys in this one, I think I think the Cowboys will cover here. I'm just I'm not sold on Kansas here, uh, so I'll take I'll take Oklahoma State to to cover in this one. Uh, both teams, uh, both teams currently are 500 against the spread. I think I had to eliminate an OK State game against an FCS opponent to make that work, but let's just both teams are 500 against the spread this week or uh, this season. But OK State uh, lost to – and when I say lost, I'm not talking about against the spread now. I'm talking yeah. real-life football points. Oklahoma yeah. State lost to South Alabama and almost is, is almost egregiously Iowa State this year. Um, and some crimes cannot be forgiven. Uh, give me the Jayhawks. That's fair. That is fair. Dinger says the Cowboys lost to South Alabama, which Jared just said. That's real bad. And the Jaybirds are only giving up three and a half. Give me Kansas to win and cover. All right. The next game here, we are entering our night games. Uh, first one here is Miami and North Carolina. This is a 730 kickoff on abc so it's the herb street special and unc is a three and a half point favorite in this 12 on 25 matchup i will let you go first with this picture Tar heels are four and one against the spread this year miami is three and two against the spread this year miami just dropped uh in a dramatically stupid fa- dropped the game in dramatically stupid fashion uh, against a very, very, very bad Georgia Tech team. And I know I've said this a couple times on the podcast. I'm going to say it again. Georgia Tech lost to Bowling Green this year in Atlanta. 
The team that just beat yeah. Miami lost to Bowling Green. Uh, but UNC has yet to play a team with a pulse. When this in doubt, is true. When in doubt, pick the quarterback. Give me Drake May in North Carolina. Agreed. Yeah, I just, I just don't trust the Hurricanes here, especially when you got a head coach that refuses to uh, bend the knee here. Yeah. To to win the game, so. Yeah, I'll I'll take I'll take the Tar Heel Tar Heels to cover. Exactly. UNC is just so mid. Austin says, "I think we just don't know about UNC right now." We 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 don't. They don't play. I mean, Miami technically a ranked team here, but the rest of their year here: Virginia, Georgia Tech, Campbell, Duke, Clemson, and NC State. Not, not really going to be tested that much now. UNC being UNC, they'll 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 lose a game somewhere in there though. They always seem to be. I mean, it would Duke would seem fitting. By the way, yes. Can I just point out something real quick? Mm-hmm. Syracuse, Kansas, UNC, UCLA. Uh huh. We haven't talked about UCLA yet. We haven't. Why? Why? What's with all the basketball schools this year? I don't know. You tell me, Jared. You pick them. No, but I'm just, look at the AP Top Twenty Five. Duke is ranked. North Carolina is ranked. Kansas is ranked. All the bas Michigan. All the basketball are- schools. <laughs> there you go. All the basketball schools are ranked this year. This only means Ohio State will dominate in basketball this year. I hope so. Michigan State Michigan isn't. State. Hey, is Michigan State still a basketball school? I said it. Neat, neat. I said it. Okay. <laughs> I said it. Uh, uh, what does Dinger say well, here? They Dinger aren't the football school. Uh, <laughs> hockey. No. Dinger says with Mario no knee Cristobal at the helm opposite him, Mac Brown should make easy work in this game. Pick Tar Heels to win and cover Quidditch. They're a Quidditch team, Jared. Here's the thing about Quidditch. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm about to I'm about to go into some Harry Potter shit. First off, never oh, read shit. a book, never seen a movie. But what I know about Quidditch is that it was absolutely invented by someone who has no idea how sports work. Next question. Uh, the next question is, is uh, who, who do you have here in the next pick them here? USC and Notre Dame in their fourth primetime slot game. Uh, thankfully, they are at home for this one here. But it is our fourth straight 7.30 kickoff game on NBC, USC, and Notre Dame. Or Notre Dame, 5-2 and two versus USC, 6-0, and oh, is a 2.5 point favorite. Here's the thing about USC. Um, USC's de- uh, defense is absolutely worthless. Uh, and they've been playing much lesser teams very closely this year. And when I say Counter. lesser teams, when I say lesser teams, I mean both lesser to Notre Dame and lesser to USC. Counter, Jared. Counter. Yeah. Notre Dame's offense has been proven not to be all that great either. Well, maybe that was the defenses they were playing. Mm. Look for Sam Hartman to get things back on track and add some touchdowns to his total this game. Um, will it be enough? and cover uh will it be enough to win and cover will notre dame or will notre dame be totally gassed at the end of a rough four game tour uh in a game that feels super 50 50 give me the underdog give me the trojans notre austin says notre dame's offense is better better than arizona's he's right he's got a point 
we know we know Notre Dame's a good team. We we do know that. But against but against quality opponents here, the most they've put up is twenty one points. Fourteen to Ohio State. Twenty one to Duke. Twenty to Louisville. Scoring in the twenties is not going to do it against USC here. They they've they've got to put up points here. All of and those I defenses just, are way better than USC's defense. True. That, that's true, but I Kyle, I could put together a group of dudes from the Discord server who would be only slightly worse than the USC defense. Okay, Jared. Okay. I, am I exaggerating? Am I lying even? Yes. But how much am I lying by? I'm still I'm still going to pick USC. I just Notre Dame's just got to prove it to me on the offense. Defense, yeah, defense lights out. Defense is really good here, and I and I think they'll they'll be able to slow down USC. But there's only so much that a defense can do if they're constantly on the field. They're going to get tired here. The offense has got to got to start putting up some points here. And if they don't do that, I think USC is going to going to win this one easily here. But but we'll we'll see. Notre Dame's got to got to get some good drives here. They they start off strong in a lot of these games. They score early, but then they just kind of just die from there. And then they and then they somehow try to pick it up uh, towards the end of the game to potentially win it. And you, you, you can't do that against USC here. So. I'll pick the Trojans to cover. Dinger. Dinger says the Irish will be looking to bounce back after the loss to Louisville and get to do it against a Grinch defense. USC is probably running low on luck after pulling it out against Arizona. Yep, in triple overtime. Uh, With that over under at 90... But I think Notre Dame's defense will stop Williams just enough. He picks Notre Dame. I'm just sorry. Um, I don't know 90? if this is on. That is a lot. I, I'm sorry. I don't know if Dinger did this on purpose. Uh, but just in case he did, I need to highlight something he wrote here. In a game between the Fighting Irish and, and the Trojans, He included the sentence. Running low on luck after pulling it out. Next game, please. UCLA and Oregon State is the next game, Jared. This is our Pac-2 after dark. Oh, I'm sorry. Pac-12 after dark game here. You, You were right the first time. Yeah. UCLA and Oregon State... 8 p.m. Fox. The Beavers are a four and a half point favorite in this game. Jared, do you want to pick first or do you want me to in this one? Totally up to you, my guy. My guy? Oh, I'm I'm your guy now. Okay. So it's Kyle. So you got a Kyle. So you got an Kyle. Yes. yes You've been Jared. my guy for like 18 years, my man. Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, UCLA coming off a win uh, against Washington State and Oregon State coming off um, two-game winning streak against California and Utah, but did lose to Washington State. So there is that common game that you can mm-hmm. kind of compare the, the two. But UCLA did lose to Utah, which Oregon State won. You're, so they kind of just... They just kind of cross each other out. I there. wish I wish I wish I had gone first because you're totally blowing up my spot right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not even reading yours. I, I know. You, I'm not I'm not I'm not <laughs> accusing you of, of, of reading my notes. So I'm just going to go with whatever the under is and I'm just going to pick the underdog. So I'm going to go with UCLA. Yeah. Um, this is a fun game to compare. Uh, both teams have played San Diego State. Uh, USC uh, won that game 35-10. to 10. Oregon State won that game 26-9. to 9. Advantage UCLA. Both teams played Utah. 
UCLA lost 7-14. to Oregon State won 21-7. Advantage Oregon State. Both teams have played Washington State. Uh, US, or excuse me, UCLA uh, won that game 25-17, to while Oregon State lost their game 35-38. to Advantage UCLA. Give me UCLA. All right. And Dinger here says, how is this a top 25 matchup? You, you can, we, I think we said that quite a few times with a lot of the SEC games last weekend. Right, Jared? Yeah. I mean, there's. Teams got to be ranked. There's like, <laughs> there are zero great teams. There's like six or seven pretty good teams. Then there's like another six or seven, you know, kind of good teams. And then there's just, it's, it's a wash of nonsense from whatever number we're at until like 60. Mm-hmm. All right. So he says, how is this a top 25 matchup? How are Duke, Kansas, UNC, Kentucky, Louisville, and UCLA all in the football top 25 at the same time? What are magnets? Nothing makes sense. Give me the best of the pack two over a buffed up Big Ten basketball school. We picked the Beavers. UCLA's a puffed up Big Ten basketball school. <laughs> now, everyone listening, if you're wondering, hey, guys, don't you pick seven games during the sloop picks? And well, we, we picked the Ohio State Purdue game uh, during the Know Your Enemy show on Thursday. So if you want to hear our thoughts on Ohio State versus Purdue, uh, you can you can go listen to that episode. We did an entire episode on it. Isn't that fun? It is fun because, you know, everybody's going to be able to enjoy watching this at noon on the Peacock channel. I'm sorry. How is the word Peacock allowed to exist? I have no follow ups. Uh, uh, any other games that interest you here, Jared, that you games that you de- decided not to pick for our pick them this week? Uh, there were a, a couple like I. Whenever I whenever I go to pick these games, I try to spread them out. I'll typically do like two in the two in the nooner slot, two in the midday slot, and two in the uh, evening slot. And then wherever, then I'll just find a, a a bonus game in there somewhere. And I probably left like uh, like Duke, NC State out there, mm-hmm. which could have. Honestly, Could probably put- would have been a better pick than than Kansas Oklahoma State. Um, there were, mm-hmm. I think, a couple decent night games. I could have, I probably realistically could have done a slate of like Ohio State it, in uh, like the it, Ohio State game in the nooner slot, Oregon Washington in the midday slot, and then the rest at night. Uh, yeah, There's a pretty good. There's a pretty good like if you're an if you're an Ohio State fan, which you, if you're listening to this, probably you have Ohio State at noon. Switch over to ABC, and just just park yourself right on Oregon Washington, and then get get the get the remote ready for the night games because it's going to be a good slight a good slight a good slate at night. Mm-hmm. Well, what about if we go back to the noon games here? On paper, it looks like it should be a blowout here. But I'm looking at this noon game on ESPN, Arkansas and Alabama. Now you're looking here, well, Alabama should be able to just be able just to beat Arkansas handily here. Arkansas is only a two and four team. Uh, they they all their losses have been one score have been well most of their games have been only one score. They've lost by three to LSU. They lost by seven to Ole Miss here which Ole Miss uh, did give Alabama some troubles there. So could Arkansas could make their way into giving Alabama some trouble here. So that, that might be, that could be a interesting game just to keep on the ticker to see, see if Arkansas is staying in the game with Alabama. You know what I just remembered, Kyle? So they're Nebraska. Yeah, they're, well, they're not 2023 Nebraska, but they're 2021 and 2022 Nebraska. 
Which which ranked team is on the highest level of upset alert at noon? This so by Georgia the, his, between his question and what you just said, I just now remembered Kyle and what we're. This is Sloot Picks Week Seven. Didn't we used to? And I think we just totally forgot about it. Didn't we used to pick a chaos prediction? Um, didn't, yeah. Didn't we used yeah, to we just do. pick a game as our like chaos predictor? Yep. Should we start doing that again? Let's do that. Let's do that. So the noon games here, Georgia, Vanderbilt, Michigan, and Indiana, Ohio State, Purdue, Florida State, Syracuse, Alabama, Arkansas. And those are your ranked teams for the noon noon games there. But don't feel like that you have to that you have to pick a, a noon game here, Jared, as you're upset here. But who who do you think who do you think is on upset alert here? Um, did you pick are you pick, are you picking Alabama and Arkansas as your as you like your chaos predictor? Is that is that your stance on it? Uh, I have a heart. <sighs> Let me see what other games are here. <laughs> uh, Utah, California. Uh, isn't isn't um, rising back in this game? I don't know. I have not heard. Anybody in the chat know? I, I'm not sure if I he mean, is. Uh, Odin, who uh, is out in that area, says probably not No, They aren't hopeful. Uh, let's see. I, I As much as I'd love to see it, I don't see Indiana upsetting Michigan. Uh, Syracuse, uh, Austin says Syracuse FSU is his chaos pick. Um, I, I like Arkansas, Alabama more than that. Um, I mean, Cal beating Utah with no rising seems at least plausible. I'm not going to hold out any hope of Vanderbilt beating Georgia uh, or UMass beating Penn State. Uh, By the way, shout out to James Franklin for straight up admitting uh, that he and Michigan are in lockstep opinion that you should just never schedule anyone ever. (laughs) He straight up admitted that in his press conference this week. And hey, uh, congrats for being honest. Uh, Head coach at Penn State being honest. Eh, it's, a, it's a new thing for them. Um, so, hit, so is that your pick? Who, 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 who's I'm your still, upset? I'm still looking to see who's out here. Kyle, we're doing this live. I All didn't right. prepare for this. No one prepared my, for this. No, um, so my my pick, I'm, I was Texas just, I was just going. Texas a over Tennessee is not a bad call. If we. Hmm. I, did, I totally missed that one. That, that, one's not a, that one's not a bad one at all. That one's not a bad one at all. I think I think I'm going to go with the other um, team that is ranked 19th in the uh, in the AP, and that is the Cougars and the and the Wildcats here. Washington State going down to Air, losing to Arizona. That's not a it's not a bad call. Um, Miami beating UNC is at least plausible. Uh, and, you know, with one of them being 25, one of them being 12, I would count that as chaos. Um, I suppose you could call Notre Dame beating USC chaos. Yeah, I mean, it's a two-loss team beating a no-loss team. That would absolutely be chaos. Um, yeah, I, I really I NC really like, State um, over Duke would absolutely, I, I feel like. I feel like there's a lot of decent options for chaos here chaos Mm -hmm. pick has to be ranked on unranked i think seems only fair i mean if you want to leave no room for interpretation that would be the fairest way to do it yep that being said i'm absolutely dropping chaos alerts if notre dame starts to beat usc um i mean it's still it's a two loss team versus a no loss team that's but yeah, if we're, if we're looking for if we're looking for like a hard black and white rule, I think unranked beating ranked is is the hard and fast rule there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go Texas A and M over Tennessee. Yep. All right. Good. And good are, stuff. are you go are you going Arkansas over Bama? What was no. was that your pick? What's your pick? Nope. I'm going with Arizona. 
over Washington State. I think that's also a sneaky good pick. I was looking at mm-hmm. some Arizona scores recently, yeah, it, it, and I think they're yeah. playing teams pretty closely. Yeah, their their quarterback. Um, yeah, their, their quarterback here um, that's played these last couple of games is actually not hasn't been all that bad here. Uh, Noah uh, Fafita. I know I'm going to pronounce that wrong here. Completing seventy. Yeah, completing seventy percent of his passes, eight touchdowns and two interceptions in in the past uh, two games here. Yeah, I I really I really like him here. It's a true freshman um, here. I don't know if he's if it's because their quarterbacks out here, but he he didn't really play much in the first games here, but got the snaps against Washington and USC here. So I, I have a feeling that feeling that Arizona would be sneaky um might 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 pull up the upset here Arizona by the way we're talking about playing teams closely uh Arizona has covered in every single game this year except when they were favored they were fa- Arizona was favored one time this year. Excuse me, they were favored. Well, I'm not. I'm not counting North Arizona. I'm not counting the FCS school. No, I'm not counting it. Uh, Texas El Paso. So they were favored against Texas El Paso, and they were favored against Stanford. They did not cover against Stanford, but they were dogs against Mississippi State, Washington, and USC. And covered in all of those games, including the last two games where they lost by only two to USC, despite being dogged by 21 points and lost by only seven points to Washington, despite being dogged by 20 points. Arizona might be a bit of a sneaky good team, at least now that they have things rolling. And you said they have a new quarterback at the helm. That might be why they're rolling now, Kyle. I don't follow Arizona all that closely. Yeah, maybe. Maybe here. At least when I'm looking at the stat-wise, that's what it appears to be. They started this season with a junior quarterback, uh, Jaden, and now going with Noah as their quarterback. True freshman. Yeah, it feels it feels a bit like a trail prior play, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, that is, I might have to check out an Arizona game. They might be sneaky, fun, sneaky, good, you know, hopefully they just either aren't on the PAC 12 network or aren't kicking off at 1030 this Uh, week. They are a PAC 12 network. Of course they are. Question is when aren't they? Oh, we, that's a, that's a different, that's a question or rather an answer for a different show. It's time to end this show. Everyone come hop by the Discord server. Uh, we will be uh, doing a social screen where we all get together in the Discord server and watch a game. I'm not going to tell you which game because that would get us in trouble. But I will say that the social screen is at noon this week. It is at noon this week. So come hang out in the Discord server. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Oh boy. Um, I, I, I did not. I did not prepare for this one. How about, how about basketball? How about basketball? Uh, basketball is around the corner. We're only what seven week less than seven weeks right now. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot less than seven weeks here um, until Ohio State uh, starts off their basketball schedule here. And Ohio State, according to the Big Ten, uh, according to the media poll, is projected to finish seventh. It's so like right in the middle there in the Big Ten this year. And how would we feel about that, Ohio State fans? I... Is that a tournament team? Is seventh place in the Big Ten a tournament team, you think? Yeah, technically it is. 
historically these past number of years, yes, it's a that if you are the seventh best in the Big Ten, that would put you in there. There you go. Austin says, stop talking about basketball. Yeah, that's fair. Every, everyone's already clicked off the show. We can talk about whatever we want now. I can tell you exactly which game we're streaming in the social screen now. Because <laughs> no one's watching because we started talking about basketball. Weather talk. Weather talk for uh, Suncard, who, um, who, who would be listening here, just hoping that we talk about weather here. Yeah. Our Ducks weather. No. They are not. All right, Kyle, that's the end of the show. Tonight's ending music is the Floor Walkers. This uh, show, this episode ending by way of the Floor Walkers. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the Floor Walkers. (laughs) 